Welcome back. Let's play some more of this game. Uh, for those of you who tuned in last time, we were playing in German. I do not know German. And so this compensates for the fact that I know like everything about coding. So we're going to have a bit of a challenge just doing things this way. Um, oh, I forget. Where did I want to go? Let's pick this up going to Fibonacci, however you say that. Fibonacci's Italian, I don't know how to say the German part of that. Here is the something for the something something something. I think sind or sind um, means like to be? I don't know. Some kind of conditional is in this question, because otherwise, whatever. Um, okay. I think knocked means knight. Uh, so I think we're just making some fun talk here. Okay. Sure. Okay, for something in the inbox. I think legen is related to the Latin word for read, legere, um, or legere. Uh, basically, we're making some kind of Fibonacci something, 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 something. Yeah, Fibonacci is the best. Go Fibonacci. But is this saying is it wants the 20th and the 7th Fibonacci numbers? Is that the deal? Also, I see that we have a zero in memory slot nine. Um, oh. Uh, okay. Sure. Um, I'm not sure what this is saying. Maybe there's a command I have yet to earn. I don't know. If I want to add a comment, I can do so by uh, dropping the comment on something. Um, oh, I get it. I, if I have a question about what a command does, I drop it onto the question mark. That only took me like three episodes to figure out. But yeah. Okay, cool. Jump if negative. Yeah. Springen. Hey, you know, in chess... There's a word, Springer, um, which they use to mean knight. Um, but I think this has more to do with the jumping aspect of it. That's pretty cool. So, yeah. We're going to make a Fibonacci something or other. Let's make some Fibonacci nachos. I don't know. Um, so, we're going to make a program where... I guess it's going to load the value in 9. Um, I'm going to copy the value from 9, which is going to be our loop iterator. Um, copy it. Okay, got it, got it. Copy to... Yeah, copy this into 4. 4 being the... This is going to be our loop iterator. Um, at the end of printing out a thing, we're going to jump not there. Can I move this down? Can I move this up? Can I move this up? Okay, can I move... There we go. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. So, yeah. I'm going to copy to four. Uh, and then this is going to start our loop. Where we... Um, uh, increment the value that's in 4 and do that some number of times and then when um, I don't know something like this oh I get it wait wait I know how a stack works um, can I restart no that's not the restart button okay Got a better idea this time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Um, can I scrap this program? 
Uh, okay. Whoops, that's not it. Uh, that reminds me, I should check, does the capture actually show up? Because I remember one time I streamed this, and I had nothing showing on screen, and that was awesome. Until said, somebody notified me that it wasn't working. And then it was surprisingly less awesome at that time. Hey, welcome. Um, as you can tell, it's certainly been a while. Um, I'm going to try to remember eight minutes from now that there's something I need to remove from the oven if I want to have something not burned for dinner. That would be great. Um, but no, I've got the clock right in front of me, so I shouldn't forget. Um, so yeah, just to recap, we're playing this in German for funsies. Um, and I don't remember how to um, just make this program back into nothing, but that's okay. Um, okay, so... We're going to take a number out of the inbox and copy it into a space here and then um, once we hit zero we're going to go back up here which means at the start of our program we're going to skip past all that. Um, and. Let's see, let's see, um, oh yeah, when we're done we want to put a number into the outbox. We don't know what that number is, but we'll have it ready at some point. Um, let's just say, you know, not copy to, but copy from. I'm going to read the value out of cell 3 and then print it out. Okay, so step 1, jump into this loop. Step two, read the number out of the inbox. Step three, copy said number into memory slot four. Um, step four is us, we're going to be in a loop. We're going to decrement the value in slot four. Whoa, that's crazy. Um, relay chess should not be that simple to implement, but... Uh, more power to you. Well done. Um, okay. Wait, this jump. I'm going to move this down here. There we go. Actually, down there. Okay. Um, so. Let's see. Each time we read a number out of the inbox, we're going to copy it into slot 4. And then we're going to take the value in slot 9, which is 0. And eh. here, let's switch our use of these addresses. Um, uh, okay, just for my own sanity. Um, so we're going to copy the value. That, we're going to copy a zero and put it into slot four. And on each iteration, we'll start by saying, oh, actually, hang on. I see how this is going to work. Um, yeah, this is going to be fun. Okay, so my iterator is actually going to be in memory slot 2. Um, we're going to copy from this is 0, putting it into slots 3 and 4. Um, and then we need to increment 3, increment 4. If I'm remembering right, I'm probably not. Okay. Um, so we decrement 2, and this is not going to be the most efficient way of doing it, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to copy from 3, actually copy from 4, and then add the value that's in 3, and copy it to 4. 
And I probably don't need these initial things for Emery Cell 4. So, okay, and then we go back to our loop. Wait, jump. Oh yeah, jump of zero up there, otherwise... Okay, this is cool. Um, let's just watch it burn. So, we're going to do six loops. Oops, oopsie daisy. Yeah, having that copy from four operations, probably not correct. That should probably be, say, copy to four. <laughs> um, although I don't, I'm not sure that I even need it. Um, do I want to, oh wait, no, I do need that. I need that copy from four, and then I'm going to add three and then copy it back to four. Um, which means I do need to initialize memory cell four to the value zero. There we go. We're going to do 20 loops. Loop zero. Got zero, zero, put a one there. Um, take one, add it, stick it there. Do another loop. Take four, add, oh, <laughs> I created a simple adder. Isn't that great? That's, that's not the Fibonacci sequence. Can you spot the bug? I sure as heck can. I'm so great at this. Um, yeah. In case, um, yeah, the Fibonacci sequence is what you get by adding, um, you take the value that's in slot four and then put it into three at, when you're done each time. So you get one, one, two, etc. One, one, two, three, five, eight, etc., etc. Um, Although that means you can't do a literal copy. Hmm. <laughs> I appear not to know how to do a Fibonacci sequence. Well, I'll just leave this running while I go grab the food out of the oven. Be right back. Has it failed yet? Yeah, has it failed yet? Oh, a basic server implementation. Maybe next time. Today I'm not much in the mood for coding because I just finished up a week of coding. So I'm up for something else today. I say as I play a coding game. Oh, I am so logical.
Hmm. I'd actually be up for trying it some other time. Um, I now see that you're not asking me to deploy it on my server or anything and test it there, but I see you're just... You've somehow deployed it elsewhere. Um, oh. Hey, look, this is going to run forever. That's great. Um, but at any rate, yeah, I'm just a bit not... Yeah, not with it at the moment. As you can see by my copious uh, coding blunders here. It's kind of funny. Oh, cool. I'll keep that open in my browser and try it out sometime. Hmm. So, I'm going to scrap this program if there's a button to scrap it. Oh, hey, look. Now that's awesome. You have multiple memory stats. Wow. Um. All right. Take two. Action. Um. Step one. Read the value. Oh, I failed. Hmm. Maybe next time I'll get it right. Actually, step one shouldn't even be reading the inbox number. Step one should be uh, initialize all the memory things that have to be initialized. Which would be, I think, just the rightmost value, I think. Let's see, how's this going to work? Copy from four to nine, or nine to four. Hmm... There we go. So then we read the inbox number, um, put that in a memory slot where we're not going to forget what it is. Um, oh, but before I get too far with this, I should um, <laughs> bump the number in memory slot 4. So that should work. That should be okay. And then each loop... Um, okay, each loop's going to take us back up to the top if we're successful. And then read the value out of slot 2 and print it. Um, I think. So, um, copy from 2 and dump it in the outbox. But when we first start the program, skip over all that. Just do the initialization routine. Um, copy the counter into 0. And then each loop, uh, decrement, memory address 0. And if we didn't jump back to the top, go back here. Um, decrement zero. Let's see, anything else? Copy from four. Um, add three. Copy to two, and then copy from three over to four, and then copy from two over to three, and then do our loop. And I think this should be a Fibonacci counter. I could be wrong. I appear not to have initialized this correctly. 
Oh, wait. No, maybe I did get this right. That's awesome. Dude, that's like magic. Now I just have to find out, in German, just precisely how wrong this is. Um, yeah, you can execute a little bit faster. Oops. I think I see a mistake. Yeah, this should not be in that loop. Let's try that again. number might be too big. Um, on the bright side, I got an achievement for that. But yeah, I think I messed up again somehow. Um, how is that wrong, though? Let's see it in slow motion. Yeah, I'm really struggling with what went wrong here. Oh, I see. You can say step one step at a time if you want. What is the 20th Fibonacci number? Does anybody know? Evidently, um, something's not right. Wait. When the number in the inbox something something 10 is, something 112358 in the outbox. Hmm. Is this saying provide all the Fibonacci numbers that are less than 10? I think that's what it's saying. In which case, I've already failed, which is kind of awesome. Um... Alright. So, copy from 2 to 3 and then drop that number in the app box. And there's no need for this and no need for that. Let's see, does this work? Does this work to the extent that it prints out 112358 and then incorrectly prints 13 because my loop iterator says to keep going. Hmm. Jump if zero. Oh, I'm not holding on to a number. Hmm. I suppose you need a number to see if we're going to jump or not. Oh, 
Okay, so one is the correct first number. I bet that one after that is also correct. And then two is correct, and then three, and then five, and then eight, and thirteen. And then the fact that I print out twenty-one just is because... Yeah. Saying, you dum-dum, how dare you give me the wrong number? And it would be correct. At least about the fact that the number was wrong. Um. But okay, I think I get this. So. I want to copy from zero. Subtract the value that's in two. And. Um. Jump if zero or if negative back up to the top where we reinitialize everything. Also, I need to not decrement that thing because that would be dumb. Yeah, the f I should not be decrementing the value in address zero. Um. And let's try that again. One, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, twenty-one. One, one, two, three, five, eight, and we're done. No. Okay. I goofed. Ah, how did I goof? I found the one use case that foiled me. That's horrible. I was so close. And yet so far and in the end, it didn't really matter. I had to fall to lose it all. But in the end, it didn't really matter at all. Okay, so what's this jump instruction? I'm still surprised. Here, let's try that again. Because I'm still struggling with how did this fail. One, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, twenty-one is greater than eighteen. Oh, that's the problem. Um, this is this thing should say after we've done that comparison, then copy back out of two and print it. There has to be a more efficient way to do this, but this works, I think. Right, and the minute it got 13 there, it started over. Which is good. It's just exactly what it should be doing. We think we might have got this one. Step two is optimizing the damn thing. Oh, solution not robust. Um. <laughs> Wait. Does solution not robust mean that, yeah, okay, for this particular set of inputs, you gave me the right output, but I think you gave me the wrong program. That's fantastic. I was wondering in the back of my mind the whole time I was playing this game, is this ever going to happen? Um, uh, does anybody know exactly what he's saying there? Because I'm curious. Uh, I'm so curious what he's saying. At the same time, I think in English it's probably watered down to the point where it's not interesting. 
Um. But yeah, he's not telling me I give him too many numbers or too few numbers. Or even that the numbers I provided were incorrect. I think in this case he's saying, yeah, that's great, but your solution doesn't work for all inputs. Um, and I think I know why not. I think it's because that jump if zero command. So I'll change, or remove that jump if zero to just jump if negative. That way, if the Fibonacci number happens to match the input number, it will get printed. Yeah, nice. 19 instructions. 201 steps. Ooh, I don't know. Can we do better? Here, let's copy. Program's been copied. Slot 2. Paste. Alright, we got the program in slot 2 now. So let's have some fun trying to optimize this. Anybody got ideas of how to make it faster? Let's see, copy from 9, put that into slots 4 and 3, and then increment 4. Um, yeah, actually, let me just uh, clear this whole queue out. Okay, so we're going to copy the 0, and then... Man, I wish I could just say add one, but there is no one. There's no one to be added, so we're going to copy that from zero into four, then bump the value in four, copy that to slot three, copy that from three into two, um, and that's our first Fibonacci number is one. And then our next Fibonacci number is going to be four plus three... Oh, actually, wait. There's a more efficient way I can do this. Alright. Uh, except I'm thinking that it doesn't take me any operations to copy a num... Oh, I'm thinking it takes me a single operation to copy a number from a memory address into a different memory address. That's the case with um, many circuits that I'm familiar with, but... Um, here, that's not considered to be a single instruction. That's two instructions to copy from and copy to. Um, so, each iteration, we're going to be printing the value that's in, well, in memory, it's, it's in slot two. And let's see. What could I do to optimize this? Um, take the number from zero, subtract the number that's in two, and if we're negative, go back up to the top. The top being, yeah, I guess up there. Um, So I take the inbox number and copy it into slot zero, do all this initialization stuff. Let's see, what else? What am I missing? Oh, but if we're not negative, we have to jump back into the loop, which says, um, I haven't defined my loop, have I? Our loop is going to be, 
Um, gosh, that's not useful at all. Let's see. Yeah, no, I'm starting to see what's problematic with having two different ways to... I'm trying to say that the value in slot 2 is going to contain the next Fibonacci number, and we're going to generate it a few steps faster on the first iteration. That's not working out so well in practice. Um... Oh, actually, uh, that's probably fine. Oh, wait, wait, wait. So first of all, it should not be a jump of zero instruction. Um, should be we do a few things, copy the value into two, and print to the out box. There we go. So a few things we're going to do our copy from four wait yeah here's the part where we take our numbers and shift them right so we're going to copy from three into four copy from two into three and then add the value that's in 4, and then jump back up here. I think that should... nope, that failed. Yeah, I printed out a 2 when I should not have. Um, how did that fail? I just assumed this was going to work, but um, that's what I get for assuming. So I put a 1, a 1, and a 1. And print out the one. Do comparison. See that we have to do another loop. Take the one, the one, shift them right. And that's how I ended up with a two. Um, so I probably uh, should have said bump plus three. Like this. Let's try that. Nope, that's also wrong. Okay, let's bump plus four, but do it a bit later in initialization. Does this work? One, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen. No, you dum dum, you should not have printed the value. You dum da dum 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 dum. Okay. Well, I was close. Um, but that doesn't work. So that's where I have to add the extra copy from two, and then dump the out box. So maybe I could do this with 18 instructions, even though it says that 19 is um, what they expected. So yeah, those are all our Fibonacci numbers less than 19, all our Fibonacci numbers less than 10. So maybe I produced a better solution than the game expected. Eighteen it definitely beats nineteen. In terms of number of steps though. Yeah, there's still something to be desired here. There's 16 extra steps. All right. Anybody got ideas as to how to make this more efficient? I'm going to guess no, but, um, you know, what do I know? So how could there be 16 extra steps to save? How could that be the case? So, at the end of each loop, so you're adding 4, copying it into 2, copying from 0, subtracting 2. Is there a more efficient way to do something? I wonder. 
There's no jump if positive. There's just jump if zero and jump if negative. Um, let's see. And yet, the point is at each iteration we need to check if the next number is greater than the number that's in the input queue. So I don't see a more efficient way to perform the comparison. Maybe something could be done more efficiently in this section where we're saying we're going to shift everything right a slot. There might be a better way to do that. In fact, can't I just take the value... Can't I take the value that's in slot 2 and put it into slot 4? I don't know. Either I did something wrong during initialization, but that wouldn't cost 16 steps. 16 means that during each loop, something's being done wrong. Um, but what? What could I possibly be doing wrong? I need to perform this comparison of address 2 minus address 0, um, or the values therein. And then jump if negative, else take the value out of 2 and print it. That's unavoidable. This thing about copying from 3 to 4 and 2 to 3 and then adding 4 seems a little sketchy, but I'm not seeing a efficient way around it. Um, let's see, during initialization, is there anything special I need to do? I don't think so. I need to ensure there are values in slots 4 and 3. Um, yeah, I'm kind of struggling with this one. How do I make it more efficient? How do I improve this? Copy 2, 0 from 9. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, take the input, put it in slot 0. Um, initialize all the things, and then during each loop, oh, wait, could I print something earlier, I wonder? Like, do I need the step 7 here? Is this step 7 completely, entirely unnecessary? Step seven's looking iffier and iffier by the moment. I could actually probably move it all the way down here. Oops, not that. Mouse, behave. I could probably move it down there, so... Oops, that does not work. That does not work at all. Um, I need the value in slot two so I can perform the subtraction. There's no negate value that I'm holding in my hand operation. Um, so, <laughs> is the most efficient way to do this to actually just fill the memory slots with all the Fibonacci numbers and then find the one that uh, happens to be... Well, that would take tons of instructions, but let's see. That's crazy. Uh, when the number in the inbox happens to be the value 10, print out those values in the outbox. Um... So, I'm still so confused. Maybe I should compute the values two at a time. 
Um, not a terrible idea. Oh man. I just thought of something completely crazy. You could compute two values up here, and then compute the next two, and then the next two. And then, as you're computing a pair of values, figure out which of the pair to print out. Or both. Um, and print them out two by two, except at the end, when you get a number that's greater than the input number, then just print one or neither. That could be doable. I don't know how efficient that would be, but it would alleviate the need for copying some numbers. <sighs> wow. Um, how crazy would that be? So, if I filled in initially 0, 1, and then I calculated 1, 2, and I calculated down here, this is, I mean, that's going to be tons of instructions, though. And this game's expecting you're not going to have more than 19 instructions. I'd need several instructions to figure out how to print out, or how to calculate the values to stick down here. And then several more to figure out the values to put up there. It would be analogous to loop unrolling for those, un for those familiar with the concept. Um... But yeah, that's not going to be efficient. Um, this inbox, put the value in slot zero, initialize all the things. Um, Copy to two. The funny thing about this is that usually you think of negation as a more expensive operation than addition. But in this game, they're the same. So all these subtract commands uh, and the fancy stuff you could normally do to get around that sort of thing just is entirely unnecessary here. Um, at least normally I think of it that way. So it's... It's a bit challenging for me. Um, yeah, no, how do I make this faster? Maybe if I watch it, maybe somehow it'll occur to me what's inefficient about this. So I'm putting a zero and a zero and a one. And then first Fibonacci number is one, so we have to print it out. And then I'm taking a zero, or putting, shifting that to the right. And then adding, putting the result there, figuring out that one is the correct number to print. Um, I mean, I kind of do. I, at the same time, my brain is kind of fried because I've been up since who knows when. Uh, well, I know when, but I don't want to startle anybody. So, um, I do want to try that out. It's just now isn't the moment. Like, this game with um, its graphics and its calm music and the fact that it's got a whole bunch of really simple instructions, it's just, I don't know. I find this simple. Um, I would find Relay Chess, I actually, you've probably seen the game I played against uh, Zug Addict um, in Relay Chess. And that game is super ultra mega challenging, and it will cause my brain to melt. Um, otherwise, I'd totally be up for it, but it's it's just too challenging for me uh, on a Friday. Sorry about that. I'm totally up for giving it a shot, but not today. That's still really awesome that you did it. Um, and uh, I'll definitely let you post that link here as many times as you want until people come along and you can challenge them to it. <laughs> yeah, 
It's always more fun to get other people to do your testing, isn't it? It's definitely so true. Uh, and it is fun testing people's stuff. I don't deny any of that. Yeah, well, this inefficiency in my program's got to be between steps 13 and 16. Could it be that I could just take one of the values and stick it somewhere else? Like, take the value in slot 2 and put it in 4 and just be done. Um, we're gonna try that and see just how bad it is. Copy. Memory slot 3. Paste. Take the value from 2. Stick it into 4. Uh, and then I guess this is gonna be add 3. Go! Don't fail me now. <laughs> I wish that there were a term for this. There's gotta be. Where you just try a program and see if it kinda sorta works. I think this is wrong. I have a very distinct feeling that this does not work the way I coded it. Because this needs to be bump plus three, not bump plus four. Uh. In a way, this is kind of like procedurally generated code. Um. Okay, copy, paste, add, put it there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No, don't. He did it. <sighs> Told him not to. But no, he couldn't help it. All right, so I goofed. Um, here, don't print out that number. Print out that one. Here we go. Uh, this might work, cause he's got high hopes. He's got high hopes. He's got pineapple pie in the sky hopes. Oops. Oops. I should fix my logic. You know, if I care. Um. Yeah, just keep printing the ones. That's perfect. It's exactly what we need. Um. Yeah, this program is foobar at this point. There's no recovering it. Alright, so we're going to put this back to bump plus 4, and say copy this to slot 3, and add from slot 4 maybe, I don't know, maybe, perhaps, go! Yeah, I have a feeling that I'm absolutely nowhere near being on the right track. Alright, 21 minus 1. Yeah, we're gonna print out a zero. Perfect. Um, copy from three. Here, let's... Wait. Yeah, let's copy from two, copy to three. Here we go. This one's gonna be perfect. Oh, it's the wrong number. So close. And yet so far. Um, all right. Solution is going to be adding another instruction in like that and go. One. 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 Perfect. Nailed it. Okay, I have a feeling that um, this is not the way to go. So here's what we used to have. And I said that something about this has got to be inefficient. I'm still looking for what it is, but, um, it's a thing. Whatever it is, it's very much a thing. Yeah, 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 so I have a feeling that there's got to be a far superior way to do this. Um... 
I just am not seeing it. I mean, it works. Maybe I need to come back to this at a later time, because it's not occurring to me what's wrong about this. Something in that loop is not efficient. I just don't know what. Copy to two, copy from zero, subtract two. I mean, you need to compute the term first to figure out uh, whether or not to jump. So that computation has to take place, as does the initialization. You can't skip the initialization step. Um, but yeah, what's, what's up with this program? So we print out the one, then we shift three to four, shift two to three, and then add three and four together, put it in slot two, and then compare address zero to address two. And if two is not greater than zero, then print out two. I'm not seeing, there's gotta be some place that this can be improved. Probably with the whole number shifting thing. Something about that's got to be pretty shifty. If you know what I mean. But how else am I going to preserve the last two numbers? I mean, the first two numbers have got to be 0 and 1. And we use that to produce uh, the desired output. But what do we do after that? What indeed? What do we do after... 0 and 1. I'm pretty sure this initialization's right, because you have to put a 0 in one slot and a 1 in the other. It's the induction step here, where we take the 0 and the 1 and we create all the other numbers that something can be improved. Um, Could it be? I wonder. Completely crazy thought here. So we are in slot 3, that's cool. So I can mess around with this. Could we take the value that's in uh, the comparator slot? Yeah, let's try something crazy here. So we put the 0 and the 1 there. Then we're going to take the value from 0 from memory address 0, subtract, um, I'm going to try something different. So I'm going to actually subtract the value in address 3, subtract the address, in, or the value in address 4, for a negative jump to the top, whatever. Um, else, I'm going to re-add, um, value from 0, put that in 2, print it. Uh, what else do I need to do with this, though? Do I actually need three addresses? I probably do. Uh, yeah, I do, for sure. Um, print it in the outbox, take 3 to 4, 2 to 3, and then jump. I added an instruction there. There's no way this is more efficient. 
One, two, one. Well, that's wrong. Um, that's completely wrong. How did I? What am I missing? Okay, this is all zero and one there. That's cool. Copy the value to two. Okay, fine. Copy from zero. No, this can't be it. You have to subtract the value in two. Otherwise, um... Let me start over. Or at least get rid of things after the initialization step. Something about this is wrong. Um, so I think that most of this is right. Or at least that this starting set of instructions is correct. Um, and then what I could do Huh. There's no easy way to negate a number in memory. I could say I could take the number, the input, subtract the two numbers there, see if I have a negative number, um, and if I don't, or if I, while I still have a negative number, keep iterating, else jump back to the top. Um, that seems kind of crazy, especially because uh, I don't have a way to invert my negative number. Okay, what happens if I do Fibonacci using negative numbers? What if I say I'm going to put um, a zero and a negative one here? Um... And then, well, then it takes me extra steps to print out the value. That's not going to work either. So now I have to put a 0 and a 1, like this. Um, I think bump plus has to have a value in the cell, right? I can't just bump plus when there's nothing in there. Yeah, right, so bump plus has to be operating on a value. Um, hey, Elsie. It's Friday. Oh, you missed this. Let me step through it again. This is the Fibonacci uh, number generator. Uh, unfortunately, I can't scroll up to the top where it shows all the wonderful instructions as to or all the wonderful directions that um, are provided in my language of choice. Um, for laughs, I'm playing the game not in English, but in German. But yeah, you can see Fibonacci numbers operate the same way in English as they do in German. But don't tell the guy with the stash over there that. He might suspect something. Yeah, I remember I was playing this, and then I got distracted by Contraption Maker, and then I got distracted by several other games, and now I'm finally getting back to this. Um, so the point of this one is you want to print out the Fibonacci numbers that are less than the number that's in the input queue.
<laughs> you know what you could do? I think this would fall under the category of memoization. Um, you could. I think there are enough addresses here. Let me double check. You can generate 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21. And still have a couple slots left over. And I don't think I've ever seen an input number greater than 21. You could generate all the Fibonacci numbers up front and then compare it to the number in the input queue and figure out which one to print out. That would take a ton of instructions. Um, however, if you did it that way, uh, it would execute in terms of number of steps very quickly. We see that this takes 172 steps. On the other hand, if you were to generate all the numbers and then say print out the right one, I mean generating all the numbers does not take much time, it just takes a lot of memory space. Um, so you would take the zero, uh, increment it to one, you have zero, one, and then just add those two, print here, add these two, print there, add these two, print here, and so forth. There's probably ways you can optimize beyond that, too. Um, like, take the value here. Well, you have to put a 0 there and a 1 there. And then you could say, uh, just iteratively fill out the next thing, take the previous thing and add it there, and take the previous thing and add it there, and just really, you could fill this up very quickly with all the Fibonacci numbers, and then just print out the right one. You'd have to compare the input number to every one of the numbers here, until you found the one that um, is, well no, I guess you'd have to print out all the numbers along the way and then print out the, uh, then when you hit a number that matches, I'm sorry, that exceeds the number that's in the input queue, at that point you just go back uh, and start over and start generating the numbers again and print out the next number. Um, in terms of number of instructions, that would be through the roof, because we have no way of memory addressing here. Like, we can't say, um, we can't manage pointers. We can't say, just take these pair of values and then shift over one. Take the pair of values, shift over one again. Um, let's see. Do you try to play a little chess each day? Or do you find yourself not playing at all some days, and then you'll play? Um, <laughs> well, yeah, also check out Mr. Corrupted's game. He implemented Relay Chess. Um, no, he actually implemented it on a website. It's, I'm sure it's the most amazing thing ever. I'm just burned out at the moment, can't um, test it out. But yeah, have a shot at it. It sounds like he did something pretty amazing. Um, but as to your question, yeah, lately I've been spending a lot more time coding, in particular with Stockfish and just chess stuff in general. I did try to do some work with Sunsetter, ultimately couldn't figure out what to do with it. Um, and, but yeah, I've spent more time coding lately and not so much time chessing. Um, for a while I was doing chess puzzles on Lee Chess, and eventually... I mean, I've seen enough interesting puzzles that I've decided to take a break from it. Um, but yeah, I want to find a way to optimize this. Uh, so I was thinking about something and showing my other solution and ended up over here. But yeah, I think each step would need to be, you add two numbers, you end up with a number. So how do we do this? Bump plus four. And we're going to need to print that number to the out box. Um, sure. Actually copy it into slot two. Okay. 
Yeah, no, it's funny. You can actually name these slots if you just click on them. Um, but I don't find it useful to do that. Let's see, so I copy into slot 2. Um, and then we need to subtract the value that's the input number. Oh my goodness, is this what I've been missing the whole time? That's pretty funny, if it is. If we're negative, then we need to keep repeating. Uh, else we jump back up to the top. Top being up here. Wow. Oh my goodness. Um, jump if negative will take us over that. There we go. Then we have to add our jump to repeat the loop. I can't believe I missed that earlier. That's pretty funny. So... Copy to zero, or copy to two, subtract the value, and zero. For negative, do that. Else, add the value back from zero and print it out. Um, um, except do that after the jump instruction, like this. And then... And this is the part where we need to shift everything right. So we're going to copy from 3 into 4. Copy from... Um, no, copy to 4. Copy from 2. Copy into 3. And is this it? So 0... Zero, one, the one there, subtract the 19. Since we're negative, add that, put it in the out box, then move that to the right, move that to the right, and repeat the loop. So, yep. <laughs> oh, that's, that's called using a stack right there. Oh, crap. Oops, I forgot the addition step. I forgot the addition step. Where do I put the addition step? Um, copy to two. Yeah, this is where the addition step's got to go. We've got to add the value in address four. So, and then copy that to two. That seems right. Get that a go. One, one, two, three, five. Eight, thirteen, twenty one. Oh, that's ha <laughs> ha. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, so this guy's all ticked because, okay, yeah, you got the right answer this time, smarty pants. But your program doesn't work for every set of inputs. That's what I'm pretty sure he's saying. That there's some set of inputs which defeat this program, although it's not the one that I provided. <sighs> it, it, it's got to make it interesting for me, that's for sure. Um, but what is it? What is it that causes this to fail, I wonder? I mean... Oh, wait, I'm missing a jump if zero command also. Wait, the next thing should be eight, but I printed a one. One, one, two, three, five, eight. Yeah, 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 yeah. I goofed. Jump if zero past the jump instruction. No, not there. Not there. This goes here. This goes there. Let's try that. Oh. Let's see. Hang on. 
Dang it, Nightbot. Oh, shoot. Does that command not work? That's too bad. I'm going to have to go into Nightbot a different way um, to make it do that. Ah, oh, I still exceeded 156. Oh, man. I thought I had it this time, too. I thought I was being all clever with those super special jump instructions. Hmm. Here, let's move this jump instruction up there. Just to be funny. Now, if that's not predictive branching, I don't know what is. Um. Oh! Bummer. My program's wrong. Although, why? How is this wrong? Oh, because it took the number out of the inbox. Jump if zero... Oh, I can't do that either. Hmm. <laughs> well, well, well. That's no good. I thought I was being all clever. Um... Still, what was my key discovery here? It's that after doing the comparison, I could re-add uh, the value I just subtracted and print it straight away. But that's no more efficient than what I previously did. So, what gives? How come this is more efficient somehow than my other program? And it's got extra jump instructions, so that doesn't make any sense. What did I mess up? So this is slower somehow, though I'm not sure how. Takes the result, puts it in slot 2. Uh, and then copies from 0, subtracts from slot 2, and then copies from slot 2 and prints it out. So this comparison step somehow is less efficient. Though I'm not sure how. Um, uh, let's see, what am I missing here? <laughs> There's got to be a more efficient way to do this. Although this multiple jump thing probably isn't too terrible. Uh, actually, most of the time we're going to be negative anyhow, so this is efficient. It's difficult to beat that kind of efficiency. See, this extra jump instruction is not a problem at all. Um, I wonder what else. Something's probably inefficient about the way I'm right-shifting numbers. Um, but really, it's telling me I could save six entire steps. Yeah, I'm at 162. I have six more steps than I need. That bugs me. I mean, how do I subtract 6 out of this? I loop more times than there are, than that, so it can't be anything about looping. Or it can't be anything in the loop. Because if I took out a step in the loop somehow, um, then I would be at fewer than 6, right? Because... 
Or rather, then I would beat the record. Which would be kind of crazy. Maybe that's doable. Maybe I don't need to be so pessimistic about this. Um, take the number, put it in the out box. And take three, copy to four. Take two, copy to three. <sighs> Is there a more efficient way to do that? In combination with everything else I'm doing. Maybe I need to pre-fill slots two and... I don't know. It doesn't matter which two I start with. So we're going to start with this being a zero. This is a one. Um, take the sum, put it in slot two. And subtract zero. Maybe I could take three to four. Yeah, maybe I could save a read instruction by after copying to two, copy from three to four, and then copy from two, subtract zero, add zero, and print. Um, let's copy this set of instructions. Go back to program slot one and replace that with this. And then do what I was just talking about, which is before we do any of this stuff, or move some of this around. Copy to two. Move from three to four, and then read two. Yeah, so we're gonna take this from three, put it in four, read address two, subtract zero, add zero, print out. Um, something like this. I'm not even sure if this is going to provide the right result. This might be more efficient, though. So, we're going to uh, program for performance and then tune for accuracy, as the saying goes. Oh. Oh, so that does not save a read operation after all. Yeah, it's saying I can't read, um, I can't add because there's nothing to add. Uh, that's no good. Maybe we change this to a read instruction. So we're going to read from address 4 instead of adding address 4. Um, okay, then, then we have to add an add of add three. Okay, this is going to be slower, almost certainly, and it's probably the wrong result. Eh, it's the right result somehow, but there's no way this is more efficient than what we used to be doing. No way that that's fewer steps. It's 20 steps, or 20 instructions, 181 steps. Yeah, that's completely ridiculously inefficient. That won't do at all. Uh, here's our last best known working program. Um, it's too bad there's no jump if positive instruction. That would be beneficial. Maybe I do need to do everything using negative numbers. Oh my goodness. That's probably it. Um, how do I do that? So it would be need to be that address 2 is going to be a negative Fibonacci number. Oh, but then to print out the value, I have to negate it on every loop anyway. So, any gain I'm making on reducing the number of jump instructions um, is offset by the actual additional negation step that's required. 
So that doesn't work either. Um, so what else? Is there anything I can do to make this efficient? I don't want to lose either of my values. Could I, in each iteration, take the result before I'm about to dump it out there? Maybe this right shift is completely the wrong concept. Maybe I need, in order to preserve the last two values, um, I don't know what I need. Copy from three to four. Copy from two to three and then add four. I mean, I've got the memory space to do more complicated things than that. Why am I doing it that way? I don't know. There's got to be a way that uses like all five of the t um, memory slots, zero through four. There's got to be some way to do it. I'm just not seeing it. What do you got to say, buddy? Welcome. Okay. Yep. Free Willy. Sure. Or Fry Willy. Something about friend something. Um, you know, by the time I beat this game, I will have learned German. But I seem to be stuck on this one. I can save six steps. I don't see how to do it. So I'm going to have to go on to the next puzzle. Modulo module. Oh, this could be fun. Something, 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 no, something, 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 one, something, 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 student? Uh, numbers have something, this, these, something, night, something, yeah, okay. For the something something in the inbox, read the something rest something something something. Um, for each something the something not nicked dividing. Um, and negative something is. Uh, I'm guessing it's saying there aren't any negative numbers. So perhaps it's just asking what is the modulus or modulo between the two numbers? Maybe? Alright, so here's how we figure out what to do. Take the inbox number, print it in the outbox, and see what did you expect. Oh, you expected a 3 not a seven so i think you're saying take the seven divide by four get the modulus which is three and print it any ideas about how to do this one Sorry about that. I'm back. Um, 
Let me move this a bit, just for my own comfort. There we go. So take the inbox number, copy it into a memory slot, sure. Take the next inbox number, copy it into a memory slot. Um, and then jump back up to the top. There we go. That's how you read all the input numbers. And then accidentally forget to print out anything, and the guy yells at you because you didn't print out anything. Uh, that's great. Perfect. A plus. Ship it. Um, so, next step is we are going to read the value in slot 0, subtract the value in slot 1, um, Uh, and then copy it in the slot that thing and if we have a negative number negative number go up to the top and at the top we're gonna skip over this part um, but that's gonna say copy it from there, add the thing that we just subtracted. Uh, I think they call that the subtrahend for those who like fancy words. Seven, four, seven minus four is three, put the three there. And then forget to do anything about that. That's awesome. Whatever. So you see 6 minus 3 is also 3. Yeah, that's why I should not be playing chess today, by the way. So, just, you guys have some idea where my state of mind is at at the moment. Um, so we're going to need to, nope, not there. Starting here, jumping back to there. Um... There we go. Perfect. There's your modulo. See? You don't need to know German to play this. I mean, maybe you do. 57 steps. Okay. I could beat that. I could totally beat that. Um, starting by what the crap am I doing? Uh, do I need this instruction? That instruction didn't do anything. Awesome. Look at that. I saved a whole instruction. Um, yeah! Okay, it's still one extra instruction and still five extra steps. Um... But it's progress, that's for sure. So... Copy 2, 3, jump if negative. Oh. Wait. Do I need this copy to 3 thing? Do I need memory address 3 at all? I feel dumb. That wasn't difficult at all. Okay. I did it in 11 instructions and 50 steps. Meaning, basically, I totally aced that. And I'm not sure how the people who designed this problem uh, didn't notice the solution, but yeah, I completely aced this. Not even trying. That's okay.
I guess they just didn't think of that set of instructions. But man, that would be difficult to discover. Okay. Something, something, no, something, something, the, whatever. Kleine Teilung. Well, Kleine means little. For something, something in the inbox. Something. Make the something, something. Division uh, by null, I assume, is prohibited. I mean, what else could you mean? Uh, I think by null it means zero, so you can't divide by zero. Oh, is this asking me to divide? Really? Okay, well, let's find out. If I take a number in the inbox and put it in the outbox, what do I get? Six. Oh, no, you should have put a three there, not a six. Wait, this is going to look familiar. Here, we're going to go back. I'm going to go to the modulo program. We're going to copy that. Okay, go back. And go to 26 here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Paste. Now you see we got our modulo instructions, right? Um, so the key here, this is where it actually becomes necessary to save your results. Um, so we're going to take the value at zero, subtract, or is it, take the value, yeah, there. Um, okay, Here, let's put our divisor, dividend, whatever it is, I guess dividend, up here in slot 2, because I'm not using 2. Um, sure. So we're going to, at the beginning of the program, hmm. Before we do any of this inbox stuff, take the value from 9, which is 0, copy it into 2. And then each step of the way, we're going to say copy our intermediate value into 3, um, decrement the counter that's in 2, I'm sorry, increment the counter that's in 2, because that's going to be the dividend that we're printing out and read the value in three and continue by continue I mean subtract the value in one again blah 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 and then here where we say add one add memory address one instead we're gonna say read the value that we ever so carefully put as the dividend uh, into address two so here we go Zero, seven, divide by two. So we're gonna have to take the seven minus the two is a five, stick the five there, increment that. Take the five minus the two, stick it there, increment that. Take the three minus the two, it's one, increment that. Take the one minus the two, oh no's, got a negative number, print it out. See? That's not so bad. Seven divided by two again? Really? Man. I mean, he should know this one by now, but seven divided by two is three. All right, so he does all the division. Four divided by five is zero. Zero divided by nine is zero. Easy peasy. Oh, I have one too many instructions. On the bright side, it does execute faster um, than the intended solution. But yeah, there's one extra instruction somewhere in this mess. Um, anybody know where it is? Do I need this copy from 3? Yeah, I do. Um, hmm. <laughs> it's got to be here somewhere. Where did my instructions go? Um, so for negative, yeah, why do I have one too many instructions? 
Inbox to zero, inbox to one. Copy from zero. Yeah, it'd be easier if I didn't have to use jump if negative. That would simplify my life. Um... I do need to use it. So, yeah, take that, subtract that, blah, blah, blah. Oh, actually, do I need a memory address 3 in addition to a 0? That might be overkill here. Um, because I could take, yeah, the value in 0, subtract 1, stick it into 0. I mean, it doesn't matter where I copy it to, really copy it back there for all we care. doesn't matter. Uh, copy from zero, subtract one, etc. So, I mean, we could see the division in progress. Three, one, seven, five, three, one. We get all the right answers, but there's got to be a more efficient way about it. Um... Funny that that solution didn't occur to me last time. Although last time I cared more about the modulo. Well, that would have worked last time too. I'm using more memory addresses than I need. Um, is it possible... I have to copy the zero into something to count how many times I iterated. Um... What else could I do to, uh, to optimize this? Zero to one. Take, where's my extra instruction? Did I just have too many jumps here somewhere? I'm not seeing it. Oh, I see. Here's bump plus two. Copy from zero, jump. This increment memory address two instruction could be placed somewhere slightly more opportune. Um, oh, I get it. So we have a copy from zero here, and we have a copy from zero here. So just move this down one and get rid of that. And that's equivalent. Uh, so that alleviated the need for that instruction. Well, that was a really simple optimization. Um, I must have done some wizardry with jumps, such that my program is more efficient than the expected 76, which I'm totally cool with. All right. Dryer Ordnung. Yeah. Uh, I put my clothes in the dryer and I end up with the Ordnung. Um, the leader, something, something. I don't know. They've been talking. I think Schlecht has something to do with talk. I don't know. Uh, what? Am I wrong? I don't know. For the second something in the inbox. Well, what's with this? It gave me a partial program. For the second thing in the inbox, read the something. Read the. or these. Uh, something, something in the outbox. Well, I'm not sure what it's asking for. Here, let's dump a number in the outbox and declare success. Oh, actually, eins, zwei, drei. Drei means three. So for each triple in the inbox, print out the something. Um... 
Oh, so three was actually the correct number there. Is it saying give me the smallest of the three numbers? Is that what it's asking for? Yeah. Or is it asking for give me all the multiples of three? No, two is not a multiple of three. Um, here, let me add a jump instruction so we get each third number. Okay. The next expected number was five, not seven. Okay. Um. Hmm. Okay, seven five one. Two five eight. I don't know why it wants that five so badly. Seven four one one. Okay, let's see what the pattern is here. Seven four one one six nine. Seven four one. Is it asking for give me the numbers in reverse order? Because I could totally do that. Copy from address one. Print it out. Copy from address zero. Print it out. And then go back. Is that all it's asking for? It's just give me each triple in reverse order. So 962 to... Six, nine, and then the next triple is three, six, seven, and we give you the seven first. Nope, 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 nope. Three, six, seven. Okay, this time he wanted the three first. Nine, four, one, one, six, seven. Um, is it asking me to sort the numbers and then provide the numbers sorted in the outbox? Uh, yeah, that's what exactly what it's asking. From Kleinen to Grosten. So from the smallest to largest numbers. Um, print them out. So that's why it's important to do that. Okay. Well... Let me get rid of the jump. I can always add it back. Um, okay. Goodness, how do you... <laughs> how, using this set of instructions, do you sort a set of numbers? Um, any thoughts? I think I'm going to need to take the value... Well, this is going to be a mess. That's what it's going to be. <sighs> so... Yeah, how do you sort the numbers? It's not like I've got a swap operation, which would be totally useful here, but... Um, okay. So we're going to try subtracting the value that's in address zero. And if we're negative, we're going to jump up here. Um... Else, if we've got a positive number, and we took address 2 and subtracted 0, and that was the least, we're going to read address 0, print it, read address 1, print it, read address 2, print it. But in the case where we discovered something less there, 
Then we're gonna copy out of address two first, and then print, and then copy from address one for next, and print it, and then copy from address zero. I'm gonna assume that each tuple is well ordered, which is probably a bad assumption. Um, by that I mean that, oh, and then when we're done printing all the things, jump way back up, where is it? Inbox. So I'm gonna assume that these are either greatest to least or least to greatest. Um, and that there's not gonna be a combination which is poorly ordered. Which is probably a dumb, dumb assumption. One, six, seven. Oh, I added a jump of zero there. Yeah, that's not the right kind of jump. That should just be a jump jump. Nope. There we go. In fact, yeah, we can jump up here to the outbox step and skip that. Whatever. Um... Here we go. Right, so I was afraid that was going to happen. Um, oh, I can undo all my changes one at a time. And then we could end up back with our original program. Isn't that great? How big is the stack of undos? Okay, it's not infinitely big. Um, so yeah, we actually do have to order the numbers. Um, that's a little bit of a problem. Okay, so the value in two, we're gonna compare to the value in, um, compare that to the value that's in slot one and for a negative I don't know is there any oh, let me think about this is there a way to sort the numbers without using if statements I don't think so I think I do have to jump all over the place in order to be able to sort. Um, yeah, this is kind of a mess, honestly. So take the value in 2, subtract the value in 1, um, and if we end up with a negative number, I'm confused. Basically, I want to do in-memory sorting. Oh, I get it, I get it. Here's how we do it. Um, okay, so if we're negative... Um, jump somewhere. Else, if 2 is greater than 1, um, oh, that's actually unfortunate now, isn't it? Okay, if 2 is greater than 1, well, yeah, we want to add 1. We want to find the least number, which is... We're not going to find it by doing that kind of operation. Um, I see now the full logic tree of what needs to be checked and compared. Um, so, if 2 minus the value of 1 ends up being positive, that means that 2 is greater than 1. But else for negative, we do want to copy the value of 2 as the least value. 
Um, I just wish there were a way, just with pure arithmetic, to sort this list. Because then that would save me the nightmare of putting all these jump commands in places to where they have to actually go. Um, there is, I mean, as far as I see, there's no way to avoid jumping left and right here. Um, hang on. Maybe there's a way that I could, like, increment one of these counters down here and compare it to all three of these numbers. I don't know. Yeah, okay, here's how we do it. We proactively assume 2 is the least number. And we're going to copy it into 7 right below 2. And then subtract the value in 1. And if we end up with a negative number, um, then 2 is definitely not the least number. Um, else we're going to jump over all this. Um, so yeah, if 1, if 2 minus 1 ends up being like that, oh man, what a mess. What gosh darn mess. Uh, okay. But yeah, no, proactively, we're just going to assume things are sorted. So assume that this is the order in which things need to be. Um, and then... Subtract the value that's in slot 1. If you end up with a negative number, um, things are not in order. That's the part that's getting me. Is what do you do when you end up with the results? Um, okay, so say whatever. Uh, we're going to subtract value in zero, and another jump if negative command to skip something, I guess. So I'm actually sorting these least to greatest down here, whatever. Um, Okay, so if we end up with a negative number there, it means that the value on the right is the greatest value. In which case, we don't need to do anything there. Um, else, if the value on the right is not the greatest value, and the value over there is, uh, we need to copy from zero into the greatest thing. And then also copy from there uh, into here. So this is how we end up with uh, the greatest value in slot 7 and the other two values in 5 and 6. Um, still feel like I've missed something. This would be a lot easier if I had to take these by two instead of by three. Yeah, let me just undo all my changes. Um, this is ending up to be quite a mess. Copy the program, go to slot two, do the same thing. Um, but yeah, sorting this involves a lot of comparison statements, if I'm not wrong. Um,
Mm. And yeah, there is no arithmetic way to do this because some of the numbers are less than zero. So it's not like I can just set a counter and have it step up and then each time it matches a number printed out. Um, that would be a, a simple way to write code. Not very efficient, but that would work. But that's not sufficing here. Okay, so... Take two. Um, assume it's the greatest number and stick it... Oh, let's stick it on the left. No, actually, we want these least to greatest, right? Yeah. So, stick it on the right. And then subtract the value in address one. If we end up with a positive number, um, that means it is the greatest. Just the opposite of what we wanted, whatever. Um, okay. Basically, I want to end up with something where I can say, like, copy from one, copy to seven. Uh, let's put all this back in here. Oops, that's not right. This really should say read and write, except um, non-programmers would be kind of freaked out by that. So, take the one or take this value, subtract that value. If we end up with a negative number, take this and stick it in that slot. Um, and take this value and stick it into this slot. Yeah, that's not efficient at all though. I need to discover what are the least and greatest values. I'm going to end up with stooge sort by the time I'm done if I'm not careful. <laughs> Did I know that the move command is Turing complete? Is it really? I mean, there's a ton of things you could accomplish with just the move command. Um, but it's Turing complete? That's... I guess... I mean... I guess that makes sense. I did not know that. Yeah, something's not right about this. Another jump command. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's absolutely nuts. Why would you do that? That's okay. I would not want to read any of that code. That's absolutely crazy that. But okay, that's cool. You know what would be awesome? If somebody if a compiler could read that assembly code and then optimize it back into the original bytecode or original binary code that would be fantastic that's when you know you got a smart compiler on your hands um, okay so what have I accomplished here you got the value in 7. Yeah. Um, this is just going to be a bunch of if and else statements, and it's going to be really boring, honestly. 
and by the time we're all done, it's just going to print out values 5, 6, and 7, and that's that. Um, actually, why am I copying into these slots 5, 6, and 7? Can't I figure out among the three values which is the least, and which is the second least, and which is the third least? Uh, I feel like I could figure that out, but no, putting it in memory is actually useful. Um... Okay, so, taking the last value, this is insertion sort, this is what this is, um, okay, if, again, negative number, add one, at the back, take this if we've got a negative number again, don't do anything, else, take the value that's in that slot, um, Copy from zero, copy to value seven, and before we do that, copy from, or rather, you know, re-add the value just for ease of reading, and copy that in slot five. So swapping these two. So we're inserting value at the end. Um, So by that series of steps, we've ensured that the value on the right, I think it has to be the greatest of the three values. And then by the end of this, we're just going to say read the value, print the value, read the value, print the value, read the value, print the value, rinse, repeat. Something like this. Okay, so copy that because I know I'm gonna mess it up later. This would be a useful starting point for four, two, two. Take that. Wait, what? Okay, I think I skipped a step somewhere. Uh, once... I'm not even sure what I did. So if we got a negative value and we did the uh, 2 minus the 4, we got... Um, we didn't need to reorder anything, I guess, is what I was saying. Um, not sure that that's right. I should just take these two at a time instead of building this amazing NIST logic, but whatever. We've already started. No, I'm going to do insertion sort. We're sticking with insertion sort. So let's see this again. Seven, six, and one. And I think I ended up with a negative value because... 1 minus 6 is negative, and then I started printing out the results um, in the wrong order. So we're going to do it in that order. Now this isn't foolproof either, for obvious reasons. So... Yeah, there's the 1, there's a 6, there's the 9. So it looks great so far. What could possibly go wrong? There's the 2, there's the 5, there's the 9. We're going to see 9 minus 5 is a positive number. So we're going to... S oh. I don't know what I was doing there. Two, five. Uh, uh, there's no way, no freaking way that that code works. I refuse to believe it. This guy up here is going to go completely apeshit and say, 
yeah, okay, you got lucky this time, but there is some set of input for which this does not work. I'm honestly just completely stunned that this worked. Yeah. No, there's... Yeah, in my opinion, there was no chance in hell that this could possibly be correct. I'm stunned that it got as far as it did. That's absolutely, completely... 100%. I don't know. I mean, that's how... How did it even get that far? This whole algorithm is completely bass backwards. Um. So anyway. Ah, oh, man, that's crazy. Okay, so here we're gonna do this. Um. Copy that to six. Copy from one into seven. And that's gonna sort for slot seven. We figured out which value goes into slot seven. Now we have to sort among the last two of these. But I first wanna just watch this fail. Yeah, so that's the point, is that these first two have to be switched. So, we've done insertion sort, and it's come up with a value to stick on the rightmost column. Um, the next thing I need to do is read the value... Um, <laughs> okay, we need to read from... Um, at this point, we have to start reading between 6 and 5 here. Um, read 6, subtract 5, and if we end up with a negative number, skip over this. Otherwise, swap 5 and 6. And there is no swap operation, by the way. I should just make that... Make a big no to that. There is no operation to perform a swap. Um, so, unless you guys can think of a way to do a swap, it's going to be really messy here. Um, there's probably some arithmetic way to do it. But I, uh, I'm not feeling it. So I have to use basically this address space 8 and 9 in order to perform the swap. And then put the values back into 5 and 6. Which is not so bad. Um... Take our value. In fact, I don't have to use all the slots. I can just say copy to 9. And then copy from. <laughs> it's important to get this one right. So, this is the value that's going to be put. Here we got. We've read from 6. We put the 6 into 9. Now we're going to read from address 5 copy it into 6, and then copy from 9 um, into 5. And that's how you sort. Now, I'm curious just how terrible performance... Oh. 
Wait, what? Expected minus one, but I printed out a minus two. Well, that ain't that pagey. Um, how did I end up with that? How did I end up with a minus two? I'm impressed. I mean, I see uh, the minus four got there, but where did this minus two even come from? I wasn't paying attention, so I have no idea. Uh, copy to nine, copy from five to six, and from nine into five. Um... Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm not seeing it. We're gonna have to try this again and watch it fail again. And pretend we're paying attention, but really just try to come up with some ideas. even less sense. How did minus three not end up in the right spot? Jump if negative, else do all this stuff. Just swap the last two numbers. Um, I guess I need to read from something. Um, I'm confused. Sub zero, add zero, copy to five. Okay, and this last part, copy from six, subtract five, add five. Maybe I don't need to have all those. Maybe I should just go back to the original program. Maybe I have way too many statements for what I actually need. Um, so we're going to subtract one. If we end up with a negative number, skip all this. But if we don't... Um, no. I'm going to add the one back. Um, copy it into another memory slot. And then switch the two. Copy from... Um, let's see, copy from 1 into 2, and copy from 4 back into 1. Okay. And then eventually we're going to print out... Oops. We're going to copy from 2 to outbox from one to outbox, and then from zero to outbox, and then loop. Now this is going to fail gloriously, but this illustrates the concept anyhow. Two minus five is minus three meaning we don't have to swap the 2 and the 5. You can just skip over that and print out the values. And then here we got a 1 and a 4 and a 7. And we're going to see that the 4 and the 7 have to switch places because of the difference. So you stick the 7 over there, put the 4 over there, put the 7 where the 4 used to be, and then print out 1 first, not that. Um, Actually, so by the time I get to this point, uh, the last two numbers are sorted. I don't know where to put the first number with regard to the last two, however. Um, so I guess I do have to do three 
things that look like this. Um. Okay. So. Anyway, by the time we get there, copy to one is the last thing we did. Man, it's a bummer I did it the way I did it there. Yeah, really what I should do is end up copying to two at the end of this routine. So we're going to do it that way. Um, so we're going to copy from one into a special slot. Uh, and then copy from two into one. And then copy from um, special slot into two. That way we end up back at two at the end of all this. Um, I think that's the same number of instructions and we end up on two again. Meaning, here we can say sub um, zero. And if we're negative, skip over some instructions, which are going to be um, copy from zero into said special slot, um, copy from two into one, or I guess into first address, copy from special address, uh, into two. And then we've got to go repeat the thing up here. Um, now can I do something special with jumping? Like, can I say that only if I switched the first and last elements, then go back and do that other comparison again. I don't think so. But I think that's going to be the key to this problem, is that by virtue of switching some elements, um... Oh man. I might have just made this really difficult for myself. So I'm comparing 2 and 1, then comparing 2 and 0. Then I guess if I switch 2 and 0, I need to compare 2 and 1 again. Otherwise, I need to compare 1 and 0. So there's four comparisons that need to go on, requiring four sets of if statements. Is there a better way? Now if I compare 2 to 1, 1 to 0, I need to do bubble sort, because anything more complicated than bubble sort is going to be a complete nightmare in this language. We're going to do bubble sort, guys. Um, for those unfamiliar, get your bubble wrap ready, and or check out Wikipedia, which is going to explain this better than I could possibly explain it, at least on a Friday. Um, copy. Okay. This thing is a mess. We're not going to do that. Delete. Yeah. It's just relieving to delete the whole program from time to time. Um, fixing a broken program is just not going to work. <laughs> Quick sort. Easy peasy. Yeah. No. Bubble sort's the way to go here. So... We're going to sub... This is going to be 0 or 1 here. Um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure that much matters. Yeah, so comparing 2 and 1. Jump if negative to skip over this. Else add the 1 back. Um, copy it into special register to swap. Uh, copy from... 1 to 2, copy from special register, into 1, 
Okay, and now we're on address one. Um, so we're actually just going to add a read instruction. It says read from one, subtract zero. Um, and then uh, if we're negative, do some stuff. Just going to be re adding from address zero, copy to four, copy from. Oh man, this is a mess. Uh, so copy from zero into one. This is bubble sort just because it's Friday and I don't feel like coding anything else. All right, so then we copied into zero. We got the value in zero handy. We've already compared one and two. We've compared zero and one. Now we need to compare, um, I was gonna say one and two. So we bubbled two over to zero, and now we need to possibly um, so what happened is this two bubbles to one, one bubbles to zero. Now we need to compare the values in one and two. Uh, so we're going to read the value that's in two, subtract the value that's in one. Uh, and jump if negative. Jumping over the thing that says copy to four. Looks awfully like this routine up here. In fact, it is the same routine. I don't see a convenient way to jump up here and then say when done, just be done jumping altogether. There's probably a way to do that. It's Friday. Uh, time is passing. So, whatever. YOLO, um, copy from two, no, copy from one into two, copy from four, oops, not that, click here, click the four, copy this into one, and then we print out the values. And then when we're done printing out the values, we jump way back up to the beginning. Um, and I think things will be sorted greatest to least, so we need to print them in reverse order. So this has got to be the least efficient possible implementation uh, that you'll ever see of this. But just to prove the concept and see that it works, we'll do it. And then we can focus on trying to find more efficient implementations later. 39 instructions. I feel absolutely horrible about it, but it works, so can't argue with that, can you? Hooray! 34 is what they were going for. I completely blew through that. 78 steps. Almost double that. Feel ridiculous for having done so. But hey, we solved it. Um, so you can see that along the way, some of these uh, get lights based on how well you did. Both in terms of... Um, we could see that maybe you have one or the other satisfied in terms of number of instructions versus uh, runtime. It's like here's our multiplier program. It's got some comments like hello, saying that it's going to use the value in address hello, and null, meaning it's going to copy the zero. It's like you see here we got a multiplication factory going on. If I remember right, yeah, I do. So go me.
and we see that we got multiplication going the other day um, with 15 steps or 15 instructions and 164 steps. It's nowhere near where it needs to be in terms of steps, uh, but in terms of instructions, we made it. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm not sure how to optimize this. Obviously, it's going to take a ton of work probably removing an if statement altogether or I don't know rather a jump statement or jumping less or something like that um, so that'll be something to think about at some point uh, man it looks gloomy and snowy and like even like the I don't know it's as if the level itself all those lights outside are fading or falling you really get the impression that you're in a high tower and things are kind of collapsing behind you. Um, just kind of special. But yeah, I'm not sure that I'll be making much headway on trying to optimize that multiplier. Although it would be cool to have a perfect score on the first 20. Wait, I don't have a perfect score on number 2? Well, this will not stand. Alright. Uh, how close am I to the goal? Seriously, how close am I to that goal? Three instructions. 25, 30. Okay, so I'm missing this somehow. Well, now I feel like a total doof. How? Just, how is this not an efficient implementation? Am I missing anything? We just need to take the values and print them out. How can I possibly do that any more efficiently with just three instructions? Yeah, no, it means I do have five extra steps in here somewhere. There's eight letters, but I need to satisfy both con constraints. Um, is this just saying it doesn't really care what I print out, or what? This makes no sense. I mean, yeah, I got it with three instructions, and it expects 25 steps instead of 30. How could I have messed this up? I don't understand this at all. It's not even possible for me to optimize this further. I mean, you guys, tell me if I'm wrong, but... No, I'm right, but no, tell me if I'm wrong. Okay, yeah, it's gotta be a bug. Okay. Bug confirmed. Unless the bug is that I don't know German, and that in German it's asking for something different than what I'm providing. Um, which would be funny, but I don't know. I mean, one thing you could do is add additional instructions here, right? So I'm going to take an inbox, put it in the outbox, take an inbox, put it in the outbox and do some loop unrolling in a sense. One, two, three. and we see that, I mean, this is fewer loops, right? Now we exceed that, however, uh, now we make it in 25 steps. I mean, that's probably the bug right there. Anyhow, Food for thought. I wonder if it gave me credit. Okay. So you don't actually have to satisfy both at the same time. Okay. Cool. Well, that just unlocked an achievement. And yet, 
So think this whole time I've been thinking you got to write programs to satisfy both conditions. I've been making this way more difficult than it needs to be. And for the most part, passing with flying colors anyway, because I'm just that great. But, yeah. Well, that was fun. Um, of course, the even more efficient way would be just take all the input values and say inbox to outbox, inbox to outbox, and not have the loop there at all. The more commands you chain up like that, um, the fewer times it hits the loop instruction. Or just get rid of the loop instruction altogether, because that code is unconditional. In fact, isn't there an achievement for do solving a program without conditional code? And if so, could I do that on problem one? Or do I have to do that on problem two? No, this one does use unconditional code, so there's not not any special achievement. Or if there is, I've already earned it. That's pretty cool. Nice. So yeah. Fun times, eh? Um, welcome something something. So yeah, I've made it through the first... 19-ish problems. Um, let's hit a trailer and then call it a take a break. Ah. Sure is a good thing that nothing negative is going to happen on this beach. Sure would be a pity if something were to happen. Caw, caw. All right. Well, that was fun. Made some progress. Uh, we got through all these problems. Well, we didn't get through this thing. Um, why did I not get through this? I don't remember. This is the sorter. I did successfully sort the numbers, but I didn't meet either criteria. So... Yeah, I guess that's where we break, is that um, we got through some problems, but neither in the number of instructions nor in the number of steps that we would desire to have such a thing occur. How far was I off on instructions? I wonder. At least I solved it, but yeah, I have five more instructions than necessary. That's too bad. Um, just for laps, copy. Alright, we're in slot 2, paste to slot 3. Say so only if we had to switch. Does this make sense? If we had to switch values 1 and 2, then jump back. Else don't. I don't think that makes sense. If we compared 2 and 1, and had to do a switch, that's okay, whatever. Then. After we know that 2 and 1 are in order, uh, then we have to compare 0 and 1. And if 0 is greater than 1, we don't have to compare 0 and 2. Um, else a comparison must be made. Or whatever. There's got to be a way to do it. Uh, compare 1 and 2, 0 and 1. And I, am I comparing 1 and 2 here again? I think I am. Not sure why. Anyhow. Yeah, I think... Ironically, you're probably correct, Mr. Corrupted, that just use quicksort. It's probably the right answer here. You wouldn't think so, but... Um, quicksort's actually pretty simple and straightforward-ish for three elements. Um, so I need to come up with a way of comparing the pair of elements, comparing this pair, and then after having compared this pair and done the swap, then comparing the last two again. So just confirm I'm on slot three. Um, I'm saying if we did perform a swap, 
Um, then we do need to go back and compare two and one again. Um, yeah, no, seriously, I'm not messing around here. It's quite funny, but no. So here, you see where we had this copy from one stuff, a copy from two, comparing two to one and all that. Um, this is going to kill the performance of the program for sure. Uh, come on. Kill that, kill that, kill that. Let's get rid of that, get rid of that. Move this copy from 2 up here, then add the jump instruction way back up here. It says subtract 1 and keep going. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm confusing that with, yeah, no, I'm confusing that with bubble sort, sorry. With three elements, it doesn't really make much sense to compare. Um, yeah, bubble sort's the way to go. Oh noes, I wrote something that fails for some set of inputs, but I don't know which set. Here, here's what we do. Take this, put it there. Um... Hmm. <laughs> I've got an infinite loop now. Uh, I can't do that. It doesn't like this either. Um. I can't have the infinite loop. That won't do. Uh. From two, subtract one, and then if we're negative, jump away the crap of wherever we have to jump to sweat, switch some stuff around. Uh, actually, if we're not negative, we're going to jump up here, which is fun. Where is my jump here? Yeah, the jumps is subtract one, add one, whatever. So for negative, we're going to jump over the jump. Else, we need to swap two and one. So, yeah, I compressed the program a bit. That's bubble sort. I'm sorry, I forget. I'm forgetting the difference between merge sort, quick sort, bubble sort, and all that, but I think what I'm attempting to do is bubble sort, and I'm, it's just saying that for some set of input values, this doesn't work. Um, which is a pity. Read from two, if we got a negative value, jump back up there. Or, I'm sorry, if we have a positive value, jump up there. If we have a zero value, this gets stuck in an infinite loop. Um, so yeah, I do need to add this here as well. And then go, go, go. Bubble faster, damn it. Oh, man. This is so inefficient. Yeah, so I missed it by one instruction that time. And by like a bajillion steps. Um, that's too bad. There's nothing I could do at that point. There's ways you could screw around with this and remove a step somehow, but it's going to take a lot of fidgeting to get it. Um, I don't know. 
That's bubble sort. Uh, if there were a jump if positive instruction, that would simplify this mess a great deal. Um, but there's not. There is no such thing. Also, if it could remember... Well, no, that doesn't matter either. I was going to say, if it could remember whether or not it performed a swap earlier, that could maybe help, but that's ridiculous. Um, copy from two, sub one, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that's no good. Bummer. Bummer, bummer, bummer. Yeah, so I'm guessing the way that I'm using all my memory addressing is just ridiculously inefficient. The fact that I'm trying to do an in-memory sort um, just demands so much in terms of steps and in terms of number of instructions. And if I'm not doing an in-place sort, like if I'm doing merge sort, um, that would perform a lot faster. And probably be easier to code. Um, or at least not take as many lines of code. But since I did bubble sort, it's slow. What I should do is, yeah, something that's not an in-place sort, like merge sort, where just copy whichever value down here, um, merge half of it, and then merge it back up, and print out the right values in the right order. Um, but whatever. Not feeling like coding merge sort in this special language at the moment. It can be done. Anything can be done. This is probably Turing complete-ish. No, it's not. No, because it doesn't have a way of indexing memory. Um, I mean, yeah, here's all these memory addresses, but there's no way of uh, establishing a pointer. So this is not a Turing complete set of instructions, but you can still uh, do a lot of fun things with it. Anyhow. Pardon me. Um, it made some good progress today. Learned a little bit of German, not really. And we see we're no longer falling out a window, it's no longer raining or whatever out there. Um, so I suppose let's take a look at the overworld. Um, I think these problems on the left are supposed to be challenge problems anyhow. So they're supposed to be kind of difficult. I'm not sure. It's kind of fun. Or maybe this is just indicating this is like chapter one. Um, and then maybe the blue ones are chapter two. And these green ones up here will create a whole new chapter. Starting with Speaker Stockwerk. Or however you're supposed to say that. I'm not an expert. Um, but yeah, look forward to that. We're going to beat all these, and then we're going to optimize them all. And then if we haven't learned German, switch back to English, whatever. I don't know. It could be fun. But yeah. I'm surprised how easily I was able to guess how what the objectives for some of these were. In particular, this one where it says sort from uh, least to greatest. Um, it only took me a few attempts to figure that out. In a way, that's more fun than some of the actual coding. But that's just the special challenge I added, just to make it more fun for myself. You don't have to do it that way. This game does play in English if you feel so motivated to obtain it and give it a shot. Um, I forget if I got it was while it was on Steam sale or whether I was just really that allured to the game that I wanted to get it. But either way, it's still fun to play. And we'll make progress and beat it one day, sooner or later. Um, and in the meantime, I guess just thanks for watching, and um, I'll see you when we do return. Um, might return for a little bit tomorrow, uh, prior to a prior commitment. We'll see. It's been fun.
Hopefully you guys uh, have enjoyed. I see there's the relay chest links. I might give that a try at this point. Just to make sure that... Oh, well, actually just to try to break it, really. Uh, that could be fun. Um, but yeah, I'll see you around.